we start with the like there's two two parts of it i think there's a, the world part uh, by making it smaller we were also more focused uh, and that was uh, in our approach to the layouts number of locations where you should go uh, and how far you're going to travel so you're not going to go into space you're not going to go into the mountains with snow uh, you're in the desert there's one city there's a couple of villages around but it groups everything together and it focuses a lot your attention for narrative and for the world and on a progression it's a little bit the same thing uh, so you kind of remove the stats or what was uh, a little bit less uh, the player choices and make it more every choice should matter a little bit more so you, every every skill you pick uh, becomes one new skill you add except instead of having uh, micro parts of progression everywhere uh, the challenges especially for density because it's more the cities uh, thing that is the real challenge uh, because it's so dense uh, you need to take a lot more the consoles or the graphical aspect and animation aspect into account so you want to have a denser crowd, because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. If it was empty, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, you want to have a, a city that is varied enough so that you can orient yourself, you can find yourself. But it needs to, and that way, it's, it needs to be big, but it needs to be uh, still uh, organized enough that you can uh, find your way back. Uh, when you're in the openness or the vastness, it's a little bit more freeform because you don't care as much for the characters, for example. You don't need crowd uh, in the deserts. Um, uh, and those were the opportunities when we were going outside of the Baghdad, was to give, change a little bit the rhythm. So you've been in a dense city, bustling, uh, people are calling guards if you do uh, illegal actions, and then you go outside in your camel, you ride in the desert, and you're just like free again. Okay, I'm free, I will take my time, uh, enjoy the scenery, uh, do one objective, collect a chest, and then you come back to the city. Again, big objective, big missions. Uh, so it was a good way of uh, keeping both uh, the old version, uh, in the old AC where it was only city, and the new where you were sometimes just crossing a vast field and enjoying it. So you need to assassinate and kill the Order of Ancients. Um, you've got a side contract which is helping your friends along the way or other factions that need you. Uh, and if you're exploring the city, you can always progress your assassin because you're going to still find your gear, you're going to still find the outfits, uh, the resources you need in order to uh, build them up or upgrade them with the blacksmiths, the tailors. Uh, so everything you do in the open world is trying to feed your progression. And when you do quests, you're more progressive, either the side stories or the main stories. Uh, yes, Basim is a little bit different from uh, the others before, but it's mainly because of the fantasy. So uh, when you when you look at the other pro protagonists, they had a very strong fantasy, which is either the, the demigod, Cassandra almost, Greek demigod, and the, the Viking fantasy or the, the, the Magi, the, the Magi in Origins. Um, and so it was less about the credo. Uh, it was always there, but it was way less about it. When you're playing an assassin, part of the Hidden Ones, that's what we do with Basim, you want to bring it way closer to home for every player that plays him, because we know how he's going to end up. Like, uh, we're playing the story of Basim, and he ends up in Valhalla as a master assassin. So we're trying to make everyone play what Basim was like when, we, when he was young. And instead of giving you freedom for how he evolves, we bring you more freedom in how you play. So how you evolve your tools, uh, because that's something we didn't have as uh, Eivor. Uh, so we have tools, but now we can evolve them, customize them a little bit more. Uh, we do the same with the perks for the outfits. So uh, he can have his uh, outfit, he can taint his, uh, the color of his, uh, of his shirt. Uh, he can upgrade them to have better perks, um, but he's not, like, he's not changing. Like he's, a, he's always gonna end up as the master assassin. Well, we, we, yeah, we knew Basim, we had a good 15, 20 years we could create. There's some allusions to what he did in the past in some of the, in Valhalla, but it's very uh, s small. So as long as we fit in the character where he end up, it was, uh, uh, yes, a blank page for this. Uh, and we knew he was coming from Baghdad, for example. Uh, and we knew his father was from Samara. 
so it was already parts of the backstory we could bring in, but it was not as uh, we, we, we were free to uh, assassinate any target we wanted, basically. <laughs> But when there was no challenge, it was also boring. So it was finding the fine line between, is it boring? Is it challenging? Uh, do you feel like you're really stalking on your prey? Uh, and how can we make it more interesting? And we had all the ingredients, right? We had uh, the hiding spots, we had the benches. That, that was part of the fantasy to hide in the crowd and we could bring it back because of the tailing. So uh, all, all these are connected. Like you want to hide in the crowd, if you don't have anyone to hide from, it doesn't matter. So by having a tailing, it made sense. Uh, yes, so we've got uh, the progression. There's three axes of progression. So we've got the rank and skills, which is more linked to the narrative. Uh, you kill your main targets, you rank up as you do, uh, and you get skill points that you invest in whichever branch you want. The, um, the second axis is more about the tools. So the more you play, you unlock tools with your Banu Musa at your uh, bureaus. Uh, and you can even uh, eventually upgrade them to give them perks and either tweak their versatility or their efficiency. Using the, the smoke bomb as an example, uh, the smoke bomb can become a deadly weapon. At the beginning it's not, it's just a vanishing tool. It eventually can become a deadly weapon as well. So it can give you more versatility in their usage. And sword and dagger are your bread and butter tools, right? Yeah. You're always fighting with those two. But again, you can find new swords, new daggers, which have different perks. So if you prefer being stealthy doing assassinations or being stealthy throwing knives uh, or regening your stamina so be able to fight longer, you can uh, by changing your gear. Well, it was one of the pillars, so like the three gameplay pillars, stealth, parkour, assassination. And one of the feeling of parkour comes from, uh, especially in Assassin's Creed, but it comes from feeling cool doing something. Uh, and for this, uh, it needs to flow. The, the flow is really important. If you're stuck all the time, it doesn't work. Uh, if, you're, if you feel like you're trying to climb everywhere and it never works, it doesn't work either. So, um, so the paths, for example, when you want to go from one location to another or from one objective to another, there will often be one path, multiple paths going to that place. If you fall, you will probably find gonna, gonna find another one uh, and come back to the previous one or another one and eventually end up to, to, your, to your goal. This parkour experience was designed with the rooftops as your playground, especially if you're wanted eventually, though there's gonna be people on the roofs, but <laughs> so don't get wanted and the roof is your, is your playground. Uh, it's clearly a challenge uh, because it requires a clear visual language. We want the player to feel rewarded for climbing and for finding the path and finding the right way or one of the ways to climb. So we kept it to mostly the military fortifications where it's harder to climb because normally they wouldn't allow people climbing on their fortifications. But for the rest of the city, you're pretty much free to climb everywhere. So all, this, all the small houses, even the palaces, you can pretty much climb everywhere. There's so many decorations or hangs that you could. So when you think you could, it will. The military, they don't want to, so you don't. So far in playtest, we don't have that many players that feel frustrated by the climbing. They feel more like rewarded for client finding their path and being happy to either scouting first with the Enkidu, finding the right path and oh, it works. Yes, yeah. it does. From the moment we wanted to go uh, with the pillars uh, that was stealth parkour assassination and an homage to the 15 years, not only AC1, it was bringing back everything we could. So collective memory as a team is pretty strong in general. Uh, everyone has their own uh, memories of what they liked and sometimes it's not always about going back to how it was done but more about what were the feelings you were having at that time uh, so that's what we did um, so of course some of the ingredients come back like in parkour for example the swing uh, the corner swings um, which were in there for the past couple of acs in a density it makes sense uh, we tried to improve a little bit how uh, the angles we could take so that it fits more with our design or our urbanism. Um, but we looked at what can we do differently. So the crossing pole came up. Like sometimes there's streets that are very uh, too wide and we want to find a way to cross them. And uh, we already have ropes, but <laughs> walking on a rope is not the same thing as doing a cool parkour move about, uh, across, the, uh, across really the street. So in on. terms of well design, what we wanted to do is bring the variety of locations to bring you across uh, 
all the different aspects of the society of Baghdad at the 9th century in, uh, in the Abbasid Caliphate. And that meant not only prisons and camps, it was also palaces uh, and places where there was way more positive than uh, the military part. So it's showing both sides or even multitude of sides uh, of Baghdad at that time. Yeah, so early on, when you come back from your training in Alamut, you're an assassin and you're an early assassin, so you're an initiate and eventually you become an apprentice and a novice and uh, all the way up to the master assassin. At the beginning, you might have to throw your knives by yourself to take down the second guard around the corner. In the end, at one point, you unlock chain assassinations and you can kill both at the same time. Um, at the beginning, you need to react very fast. If someone detects you and throw a knife at him or take him down, eventually, you have the emergency aim that can help you uh, do that, and it reflects what Basim is doing. He's becoming better and better, and you as well as a player. And it's a little bit the same thing with the tools. So the tools at the beginning, they have a, a specific function uh, that tap into the stealth uh, of the game in general, or the stealth pillar of the game. Uh, so the smoke bombs help you to vanish or to create a path where you're not being seen by AIs. The, Throwing a throwing knife, they can kill someone, of course, they can destroy objects. Uh, the traps, uh, they can be placed somewhere to take down the NPCs, and we have uh, the, the blow dart to make people sleep. So the throwing knives, eventually, <laughs> you can choose a perk uh, and add the poison tip. And now your, your knife, you don't have to aim it at the head all the time. You can, even if you miss, the, he's gonna, the, the, the enemy will be poisoned, uh, he's probably gonna die anyway. Uh, or you can add the charging effect and you're going to be able to like, uh, throw further and stronger against NPCs, do more damage. Eventually, you can even add the armor tip. So some of the larger NPCs or more armored NPCs cannot be killed by throwing a knife at the beginning. At one point, you, you, you can pierce the armor with your knives. And there's even uh, some of the later uh, upgrades on the throwing knives, the corroding uh, knives, which will make the dead bodies disappear so they will still npc enemies would still see enemies being killed but if they were turning their corner and they would not see the dead body anymore so you don't have to hide those dead bodies so it can make your life easier uh, for the newer fans uh, i i think they will still find the same dna of exploring a, a a world, discovering location and its lore, uh, having the having it react to you, uh, that's still going to be there. Living the history, it's going to be there. Those feelings are always there. They've been there from the start, though they're still there here. Um, and the skills, they had a huge skill tree in Valhalla. They're still going to have a pretty big skill tree for Mirage, for a smaller game, uh, for this amount of hours, basically. So I think they're not going to feel lost in it. Um, they will feel maybe the it's a different take on the narrative part, especially that you're playing a, a character that exists rather than your own version of a character. Uh, but I think they will they will like it anyway. It's a it's a different experience, but it, it rings true to the same DNA vibes uh, that we had before.